Welcome. Thank you. Miss Stephanie Marie <laughs> Twum. Miriam. Miriam. Cl- close it up. <laughs> Miriam Twum. Yeah. Yeah. To the fourth episode of the Mr. Atlanta Podcast. Yay. I'm excited. Oh my God. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you. <laughs> Honored. Absolutely. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> so what's going on? How was your day? Oh my gosh. Day's been pretty good. Uh, you know, I had one client. I had 14 yesterday, one today. <laughs> Huge. 14? Yeah. 14. Jesus, Mary. Yeah. How? I know. How many at one time? Like I had like five, and... two groups of five. Like, uh, I can't even remember, honestly. Just, it was a blur. <laughs> but, you know, I love what I do. I mean, it's just kind of like, hey, I'm helping more people. That's That's the goal. So, 14, 20, like. You know, that's what I signed up for willingly, so. 14 to 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what's your background? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Yeah, so I grew up mainly here in Atlanta. <laughs> Pardon my interruption. So you grew up in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, and uh, my parents are from Ghana, West Africa. So they've been in the States for years and years and years. And so we've been in Georgia, yeah, forever. Um, and I have two sisters, Caroline and Jennifer super close and what else about me basic info yeah just we've been here <laughs> we're in georgia um swanee peachy corners area mainly so we've been in that little small world so okay where'd yeah. you go to school elementary middle yeah high? so elementary I went to Macaheart heart of mary and high school i went to st pius so catholic school like all my life <laughs> super catholic you know what? I used to be super Catholic. No, I'm, I'm Catholic, but I'm I'm Catholic. <laughs> I'm not Catholic. <laughs> not completely Catholic. Right. I'd say I call it Catholic as fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, that right. Yeah, true. I got a Cajun family from Louisiana. Oh yeah. They uh, <laughs> never miss church. <laughs> Don't believe in birth control. Yeah, that's true. But uh. We'll swear and drink and, and party and go to the <laughs> exactly. LSU games and, and get it, get it on, baby. So funny. Wow, yeah. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me, my background. Okay. Mm. So, what do you do now? What do you like to do? Yeah. So, I run a personal training and glam company. Um, you know, it's so funny. I did not plan on doing it. Really, I went to college thinking I was going to be on the news, be a journalist, but then I graduated and I was like, eh, never mind. <laughs> no. I was like, no, my heart wasn't in it. I mean, I love TV, but I don't love it enough to just spend my entire life doing it. I'm like, okay, so what's the point? So, you know, I worked at little corporate offices here and there, but I didn't really feel like I was helping anybody, let alone myself. So I was like, hmm, what do I actually like to do that I can help a multitude of people mm-hmm. every single day? And I was like, hmm, fitness love to work out so when i was working full-time went to personal training school and um when i was in school and i was like i feel like i should just start my own thing like i just had like a little feeling but i didn't act on it until like months later every time i was at work and i was like i feel like i don't belong here like i'm working for a great company but i'm not really like that happy i'm just going through the motions i mean i would meet strangers at my office and they're like what are you doing here I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Wait a minute. So what kind of company was it? It was uh, IT staffing. Mm-hmm. IT staffing. So just not really in my world at all. Um, it was it was a great company, great people. I just wasn't was, was, was it for me. Like I wasn't excited about anything. Wow. So uh, I was just sitting and just typing away and just being close off from the world. I would look outside. It's sunny I'll get offers to model do this I can't even do because I have to work and I felt like I was missing out on life by just doing something I didn't want to do and life was too short way too short so uh back when did you in, make that decision yeah so two years ago it was around like August and I go to Ghana like at least once or twice a year and I went into my supervisor I was like okay it's my yearly trip and she was like okay you have about six days and I was like really Six days ago to be up beside the equator. Six days. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I was like, I think I'm gonna put in my three weeks. And, and it hit me. The re- one of the reasons why I started my own thing 
is because I want that flexibility to go back home and be with my family. Mm -hmm. Like, if I want to go to Ghana tonight, I can't. That's so important. Like, I don't want someone to tell me I can't go see my dad. No. I was like, no. <laughs> I've got to do something about it. Tomorrow fit is happening. So, put in my three weeks, went to Ghana for a month, lived my life, hopped off the plane. I was like, uh, I don't really have a job yet. <laughs> Left. <laughs> this is no plan. I was like, oh, I need a job. I, mean, I had clients, but obviously not enough to compensate while I was making full time. So I was like, oh man, I really have to do this thing. So I put myself out there, lived off my savings for a while, and then just honestly just put myself out there. That's really what I did. No magic formula. I didn't go to some expensive conference. Like I literally just did it. How? Oh, just talking to people. I see them right in the park, I'm like, hey, you look great. Want to work out? Here's my card. Like, just something simple. Like, a, not forceful, but just natural energy and just connecting and just ask my friends, like, hey, do you or anyone else want to just work out together and see what I can do? Like, just being, like, honest about who I was as a, you know, as a person. That's how I was able to climb. Now, it hasn't been easy mm -hmm. at all. It's not easy. I've never worked out of, out of a gym ever, corporate gym. It's all like self-generated like never work at LA never because I was People's like places yeah people bars, yeah and... I literally just created my own gym in my head <laughs> like literally I because I was like I want a hundred percent profit <laughs> no yeah. and I was like treat is sometimes underappreciated so I, I felt like I was like no I know how to maximize I'm good at what I do so let me just do it myself <laughs> and I'm so glad I'm doing it this way it takes longer but it lasts much longer because I am in control and honestly it's like I'm able to give myself even more like I I, I feel appreciated because I appreciate myself and I felt I feel like a corporate gym just wasn't gonna give that to me so here I am <laughs> I love that so how long have you been training yeah so two years just okay. two years. Um, best decision I've ever made in my life, honestly. It's so funny. Uh, my family was just kind of like, what? A trainer? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and they're like, okay. I mean, that's where you feel your heart lies, and it, it does. It's. I grew up wanting to be a movie star or, you know, uh, all kinds of different things, but never, ever crossed my mind to be a trainer. But Where'd you go to college? Georgia State. Georgia State? Yeah. Okay. What did you graduate? What did you study? Yeah, so um, journalism. I'm in sociology. Um, I was in Zeta Tau Alpha, so okay. that was fun. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I love college. 2015. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I, I'm having fun. 2012 for me. Oh, see? Yeah. Oh my god. At Georgia State? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh my god. We talked about yeah. kind of so many things. Yeah. Everything, everything but it's was really college. College, yeah. Yes, I was there and did bigger things, and it was great. That's actually when I learned how to work out. Um, and I just want to point this out because people always ask me, like, how did I get into fitness? Honestly, I had five guy friends from different places, and they taught me that women need to be into fitness. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of them. And, the, and it was, like, a diverse group of us, like, just us working out five days a week. And they're teaching me how to live. You know, like how to just do everything because they they saw something in me and that's why my brand is so diverse because of my five guy friends and they know exactly who they are because I thank them every day. It's because of them that I'm doing what I'm doing now. So I just want to point that out but, there because yeah. I know they're going to listen. <laughs> Much love and respect for yes. the Anonymous Five. Yeah, the Anonymous Five. Life changing, really. So. It's huge. It's yeah. really necessary to have somebody yeah. like that to mentor or guide. Yeah, it is. Pay the way. Yeah. Enable you to be able to do so yourself. Because mm -hmm. honestly, people can see something that you may not see yet. You will eventually, but it's like when you're connecting with someone, you may not, you don't know exactly what they're thinking and feeling, how, you know, when they're around you until they actually say something. And then you realize that you, you know, you, you changed your life in some way, and I think it's important. I feel like we're all called on this earth to serve, whether it's to talk, whether it's to, I don't know, anything. It could be big or small, but it's like we're all called to help, really. And without service, what well, Yeah, are yeah, no, seriously. I feel like life is be so dull if it's just about you, 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 me, 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 you know, like, I 
I'm honestly living my best life because I'm helping other people and that's as genuine as it can get like literally like sometimes I feel a, a rush of like euphoria and I'm like oh my god this is my life <laughs> that sense of love yeah that purpose. sense of yeah a purpose it's so heavy and I always want to encourage people to find their purpose and you can you just have to be willing to sit in silence and maybe not literal science, but literally just sit down and just be like, hmm, what do I love to do? And how can I help other people do that? How can I maximize that love and spread it? And that's where your purpose lies. It doesn't matter what it is. But I feel like some of us miss that and we just go through life. And I think that's sad. I think it's sad, like, missing that moment of, of peace and sense that you need for yourself in order to serve. So I'm, I'm, I'm so much more centered than when I was, like, three years ago. Love like, to hear that. Yeah, so much more centered. Like, like I just, I don't know, I just know what, what's more important now. And I'm just focusing on that. Focusing on energy, focusing on purpose, just focusing on people who really want to see you win and they want to see themselves win. And that's all you really need. Everything else will follow. I love it. Yeah. The hustle drive. Where's it come from? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you know, my parents. You know, having immigrant parents, kind of, it's kind of like you're looking at two different sides of the same coin. Um, it's like they work so hard in this country to put three girls in private school and all that. I mean, that's hard. You're coming here, you're having an accent. It, that's another. <laughs> and they're like, what? Where are you from? Like, please be English. Like, it's, it's hard. It's so hard. And so watch my parents, especially my dad, just succeed in whatever they did I mean they were they're so successful now because they worked hard for it and so it's just in me to just want to work hard and knowing that if my parents could do it and I'm already here so I have no excuse <laughs> right. honestly so that's my parents they give me that drive and that that sense of like that hustle that like I can create my own life because they did it for my sisters and I so so where'd they that's get cool. it from Ooh, well, um, I guess a lot of people don't know this about me. So I come from a very like politically elite Ghanaian family. My great grandfather was a prime minister. My great uncle is the current president. A lot of people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know, now you, now know. you know. Yeah, very political. Uh, such history. So that's where they get it from. Like, Interesting. Just very Ooh. like you know having that drive to just help people in any kind of way and there's politics with them but yeah that's that's kind of like my secret background like yeah <laughs> my yeah. secret life <laughs> low key i i don't talk about the politics in my background exactly like yeah either i don't either i just grew up here and i'm like kind of like over it to be honest but that is my secret a lot of people don't know that family history that my life is totally different over there to be honest <laughs> awesome. Um, people know who my dad is, so, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of, he's CEO of DDVLA, so basically he helped mandate the new driver's license and the new driving test, so, uh, he's, so like the DDS? Yeah, Atlanta? yeah, he D -D owns all of them. Mm-hmm, yeah. And he owns the DDS. He owns, yeah, he's it's the not CEO. not government. Yeah, right. It's privately owned. Right. So, it's like, I get <laughs> nobody knows, but now they know. Can I drive <laughs> Mr. Twong? What what is required for me to get a yeah. driver's license? Exactly. In so Ghana? Right, but really they'll go, they'll ask, they'll ask me, like, oh, that's your dad, can I get a driver's license? I'm like, go to his office. I'm his kid. Don't know anything. <laughs> I'm in America, sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So So how many followers and friends and people <laughs> do you have from Ghana? Oh, I'm on um on Instagram or just that? It, Ooh, a lot, actually. You know, I never really thought about that, but I think a lot. Yeah, it's, um, my sisters too. I mean, I think it's because my dad is doing such great work and you know, he's helping a lot of people, giving a lot of young people jobs. He's opening offices and he's giving people, because the unemployment rate is crazy. So he's creating new offices and giving people opportunities. Again, going back to that service heart that my parents have that I adopted. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's big. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That's really great. Thank you. So now you really know me. <laughs> I guess most people don't. <laughs> so. Pleasure's all mine. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. So what are your current kind of capacity and goals? What's happening yeah. with Twom Fit? And your yeah, definitely. So I want to open up a gym in Ghana in the next two years. Um, just giving back to my people um, and open up my own private studio end of 2020. Like it will be like a gym and a hair salon and a like esthetician's office, like really like glammed out in fitness. Um, okay. So yeah, Good. those are two It'll big goals. Yeah, sure. yeah. And um, I started a cheer program for the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta called Shape Your Pom Pom. Okay. Yeah, and cool. so basically, my main goal is to make it a program partner where it's like nationwide. Okay. So starting of course at home and then. By the end of 2020, cross my fingers, I can cross like seven states with shoot your pom pom. Shoot, girl. Well, yeah. How we can help. I yeah. would say, uh, mentor and the big brother's big sister. Oh, program. I love that. Yeah. Like I would love. Yeah. I would love that. I mean, I love giving back. And if I can give back with fitness, why not? <laughs> so. Especially with the youth. Exactly. Yeah. Five percent of schools in Fulton County do not have any fitness, extracurricular activities, no wow. physical fitness required whatsoever. I gotta ever. go over there. <laughs> it's, it's an epidemic. Yeah, that's crazy. Actually, that's sad because fitness has saved my life and your life and so many other lives. It really has. Truly. And it's not. It, it's not subjective. Everyone needs it. It's necessary. It's necessary. Our bodies were designed for movement and for, for you know, vibrancy and just energy. Like, we're designed for that. And it's a shame that that's being taken over with unnecessary stuff. Mm. Just a bunch of stuff. Like, I know. think about being in this climate-controlled home, to my right. climate-controlled car, driving yeah. to my climate-controlled office. See, there you go. And the little bit of real mm -hmm. direct sunlight or, yeah. or conditions of weather that we actually feel is little to none. And so I think that's really compounded into a lot of things. Mm -hmm. The most basic principle that I tell people to, to get happier and healthier is to get in the sun for the first 20 minutes of your day. Oh, as soon that. as you wake up, get in the sun, drink water, and ground. No shoes on the ground oh, wow. to the earth in the sun. It's the number one thing to help improve your circadian rhythms, your sleep oh, cycles, mm. your overall mood. Yeah. It's the only real way that we can also get vitamin D and B. Wow. That's actually pretty powerful. Like everything that we need we have already. We have. It's very accessible. We just yeah. gotta go get it. Yeah. Wow. I'm actually gonna try that. I feel like that would change a lot of things. Because my, I think my struggle, and I want to share this too, because we all have struggles. Um, I get so caught up helping other people all the time, and I kind of like forget myself. And sometimes by the end of the day, and I actually spoke this on Instagram, it's hard for me to be present sometimes because my mind's constantly like, okay, I need to call her, I need to make sure she has a real plan. Like, I'm like freaking out. Right. And it's kind of like, whoa, did somebody eat today? Does Stephanie drink water? Does Stephanie actually get eight hours of sleep? And it's like, I don't ask myself those questions. I ask my clients those questions, but I'm not asking myself those questions. So my main goal, honestly, for this season is to just literally ask myself out loud, did I drink water today? Hmm, I'm pausing, so no. Like really having a conversation with myself and being real with myself. It's important. That's where it starts. Yeah, because if I want to be you know, if I want to continue what I'm doing and, and be the best version of myself to help other people, I have to take care of myself as well, beyond working out and eating healthy. I mean, it starts here too. Absolutely. So whenever I start to feel like I'm overwhelmed, I'm honest with people and say, hey, I can't be present right now. I started doing that and it actually just changed my life. Like, I can't be present with you right now and I really want to, but I literally can't, can I get back to you tomorrow? And they're like, oh. Okay. <laughs> I love and respect it's, the fuck out of that. Yeah, it's raw and it's honest, and it actually does something in my head. It helps me not feel bad about saying no and saying I need a break. Like, can I back off a second? Like, give me a moment. Like, not feeling bad about that. Mm. Other party still feels acknowledged. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I showed with, with entrepreneurship was saying no and not feeling bad about it. Mm. But now I'm kind of like, no is a complete sentence. Like, I can't do it right now. 
but let me get back to you. Instead of just, you know, trying to do it and I'm not there and designed to get, you know what I'm saying? I just like. Can't fully commit. Yeah, it's Can't just, there's no point. All. Yeah. I know, because we planned this, what, like 10 days ago? Yeah, see, there you go. So, it, it's how I can't me. do it soon, I can do it. Right. Next Friday. Exactly. It's it's okay to be honest and, and raw. And I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, there's just this weird trend of being closed off and like, oh, I have no feelings or, I, you know, and I and I'm and I'm bringing this up because when you when you said you know go outside barefoot and actually feel the ground, I wish we could celebrate that celebrate that more. Like feel like it's okay to feel like you if you're upset, okay, embrace that and say okay, why am I upset? Like what is the root of this emotion? And I started doing that to myself. And it helps me have more compassion for other people. Mm-hmm. So if they're upset with me or they're, you know, saying rude things, it's really not me that they're upset at. They're upset at what's been, you know, in their subconscious mind and it's just coming out at me. The convenient target. Absolutely. Yeah. It's huge that you can recognize that yeah. and identify it because it's something mm-hmm. it's hard for anybody myself. It's hard. It's no, it's it hard. All the time. It's really, really hard. I just feel like once we start embracing our emotions and really understanding their origin, because we don't feel things for no reason. There's always a story behind it. We may not know it, but our subconscious mind knows it. That's why we respond to it. And once I start giving myself that grace, I give people that grace. Mm. So all that I've learned through entrepreneurship. <laughs> Show that grace, girl. Yes. Let's spread it. <laughs> Absolutely. Love so. it. So let's talk more about your pageant. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Who? Um, being a United States of America, Miss Georgia, you know what? I said this, I forget. <laughs> because I always tell people that it's a title that I pass down to somebody else. So I don't actually introduce myself as, oh, by the way, I'm, no. They just happen to find out on social media. I'm like, oh, yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know. and then now you know. But it's like, uh, pageants have really helped me become a strong um, individual because you have to train for it. It's not you just don't look pretty and you win. No, you have to speak properly. You have to have a platform. You, you know, have to have, you know, something that you're, that you're after, which is like people. But in what way are you trying to be an attorney or a doctor? Like pageants really encourage women to to stand up for what they believe in and to give back at the same time. And you can be, you know, bad and bougie. You can be hot and intelligent. Like, I, that's what I love about pageants. Like, you can be whatever you want. Just embrace it. And the judges will see it, and then your community will embrace it. Mm. And I started pageants, actually my first was Miss Georgia State. And when was, I was like, what, 18? The day before my 19th birthday, and I won Miss Congeniality. What year was this? This was, hmm, was it 20? 11-ish. I feel like I was 2012, there. I, I like think. I, I think it was 2012, actually. 2012? It was February 2012. I was still on campus. Yeah. Was still in it was college. in February, the day before my 19th birthday. Yeah, it was 2012. Yeah. Where was the event? It was, what's it called? The big auditorium. It wasn't, was it at a hall, maybe? I don't know. Not Rhodes Hall, the one by the student yeah, center. Yeah, the one, the one by the student center. Yeah, That's where it was. was. Oh my gosh, look at that. See, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> I have to look through some pictures, but I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure I some pictures. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> my first pageant <laughs> ever. Wow. I won nuts. Miss Congeniality. I was like, oh man, I like this. <laughs> what fraternity did you represent? Uh, honestly, okay. it was just by, I think it was just by, um, uh, Rose Court or? It, it was, you know, it was just by our city. So I just, I did Lawrenceville or something like that. Yeah. We just, no, I mean, like, you were a Zeta, right? Were yeah, I was Zeta Alpha, yeah. So, Sigma Nu. Oh, Sigma Nu! Yeah, 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 yeah. We were Sigma Nu a lot. Yeah, yeah. Sigma Nu. I yeah. am a Pi Kappa Phi. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. From State. Yeah, I know some Pi Caps, too. Oh, my God. This is so funny. Like, our words were like the like... same, but we were, like, so close, and then it was like, <laughs> I love That's it. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, because I built that discipline through pageants, I was able to build that discipline in all the other areas of my life. And being Miss Georgia is my first state 
title ever. Mm. Ever, ever, ever. So it's like been a whirlwind, but it's opened so many doors and it's revealed so much about, you know, who I am as a woman and who I'm surrounded by. I mean, it's done so much for me and it's like, uh, but it's funny, I, I, I kind of forget that. I look at my crown and sash and I'm like, oh wow, this is real. <laughs> this is mine? What? <laughs> so when did that happen? March. March? Yeah, of this year. Okay. Um, I just, I mean, no words, just speechless. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Signed in my contract, like, all right. <laughs> oh, wow. What, what, what were you signing? Like? Signed in my contract, like, okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, but it's so nice to be able to, um, put on that crown on sash and I go out there and I, you know, I volunteer and I, 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 I get so lost in conversation. I, I forget that it's on my body. And people are like, oh, can I talk to you? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that has to stay on my head. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm so, like, I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, I don't get lost in that title. I'm still Stephanie with or without it. Mm. So I'm able to, you know, be centered. And so when people were like scared to come up to me, I'm like, no, please come. <laughs> you can ask me anything. Like, this is just stuff. Like, I take this off, but I'm still Stephanie by the end of the day. Like, you know, Absolutely. And so it's, it's too funny. Like, I literally forget <laughs> how much it weighs, the title. Like, I'm how much like, is it weigh? Oh, it weighs a lot. It weighs about, it weighs all of my dreams and, and aspirations of being Miss Georgia. That's how much it weighs. So it's, it's, wow. it's heavy, but it's light enough for me to take it off and not identify myself by a title. So I don't believe in that. Because mm -hmm. who I am is right here and what I say and how I care myself and that's it. That title, I'm passing it on to somebody else. So I don't own it. I'm just borrowing it <laughs> for a year. <laughs> Keep it up warm. Exactly. So yeah, it's it's been great. And you're also Miss, Miss Brawl for a cause. Uh, oh my God. That, um, did not see the one coming either? I mean, that, I mean, I'm so honored. I remember I, I, I was thinking Matt Thomas would be like, I was like, oh my God, thank you, thank you. Because <laughs> I've been watching it for a while, and then to be able to really represent such an amazing organization is, I'm like, truly so honored. Mm. Like, wow. Well, wow. you deserve it. Thank you. And thank perfect you. for it. <laughs> thank you. I just, um, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm. I, I've this year has been probably the best year of my life so far. Honestly, I think everything that I've been building for so long and having that tenacity to just keep going. Now it's like I'm reaping the benefits, and it's possible. Like it's anything that you want is it's here already. It's just the timing, and it's just you. What are you, what are you doing every day to lead up to that big moment? Um and. We all have it. No one is more special than the other person. It's just that some of us just are more centered, but that doesn't mean you can't be centered. You just have to go after it. And it's there, like literally right there in our faces. So. Go and take it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the next brawl is gonna be pretty great. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I just started doing some of the marketing. Oh, really? Like we were talking about earlier. Oh yeah. my God, I can't like, wait. Last week, the week before. Wow, I can't wait. I think it's just amazing. Yeah, and Matt was emceeing Master of Ceremony uh, an event last night. I saw. I was like, oh. The wow. Atlanta Business Chronicle That's was so hosting cool. the top 100 companies to work in Georgia. Wow. And over 600 That's companies huge. applied, and they gave out the winners. And I didn't have a ticket. Um, <laughs> But I showed up <laughs> and I got in. That's so funny. And ended up making friends. And yeah, there you go. I sat at the Amazon Web Service table oh, right wow. in the front because there was two available seats. Okay. And I ended up making friends with all the AWS people. Yeah. They were like, you got to cheer super loud when we win. They got second. <sighs> the company in Georgia. Yeah. Wow. So must be a pretty good place to work. Yeah. But Matt is the king. He is. Of MC. Yeah. I've never seen somebody with composure. Yes. The natural Honestly. vibes and, and all his words that he gives out. Yeah, he's such a natural. 
He's so great. I mean, he's the so MC great. MC of MCs. Yeah, I know he really is. I mean, I, I think he's a very special person, and it's like, when you're talking to him, he's paying attention to you. Mm-hmm. He's not busy on his phone. He's not looking around. He's actually making you feel like you are just as important, and that's a special person right there. That right. really is. He carries a presence, and I love that. I love it, too. I wish yeah. more people I know. had that kind of feeling. Yeah. Listen and truly care. Yeah, and truly, yeah. Again, being having that emotional availability to to listen mm-hmm. and to connect and to grow. You can you can do that on your own for so long. You, I think we're designed for human interaction. True. We are. We are. Pause break. I yes. think I heard the camera. Yay. Just switch. Yeah, a lot of people don't. You're like rare. Yeah. <laughs> try to be. I strive to be. Because your nutrition is super clean. There's nothing clouding you. Um, That's probably what it is. Yeah, so <laughs> eight months of raw vegan diet. Yeah. Wow. So what made you decide to do that? Now I'm asking you. <laughs> well, I got brainwashed by one of my mentors. Oh. He looked like he lost 20 years and 30 pounds. Wow. And I said, what? What? What'd you do? Yeah. And he said, I eliminated all chemicals, processed food, and meat from my diet. This is what I eat. This is kind of how I do it. And we started talking about it. I did my own research. Right. Watched some documentaries, read some studies, mm-hmm. listened to other people's testimonies, and decided, okay, I'm cutting it out, cold turkey, no turkey. Wow. Vegan. Yeah. I, I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to go vegetarian or pescatarian or what. I just knew that I had to get rid of processed food. High fructose corn syrup, right. sugar, and meat, processed meat, right? Particularly a yeah. class one car- carcinogen, right? Wow. And um, you know, for thirty years, I ate all that. Yeah. And so, eight months ago, I cut wow. it. And the first week, a lot of people said that they have less energy. Maybe I did, but I was just always so active and working mm-hmm. that I don't really feel it. Um. I also used a lot of oats and granola oh, grains to help yeah. supplement with that fiber. It helps you right. feel full quickly. Yeah. And so between that, eat about 40% fruit, 30% vegetable, 30% nuts, and 10% grain. I'm wow. on this, this raw, amazing. vegan, uncooked, in a blender usually with more mental clarity and physical energy than I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Like two or three times a day at levels I've never done. My body's regenerating faster. The cells are wow. coming back. Any kind of ailments are near to none. Yeah. It's, it, it's just like, I want to share this feeling with everybody. How do I best yeah. put this into words Absolutely. to articulate this feeling that I've never had before in my entire life? Just to share with the other 98% of America yeah. that doesn't practice veganism. And get rid of the shame of that. I, I say right. plant based. Right. Because it really is. You can eat vegan food that's shit. Yeah, that's yeah. That's There's true. There's a lot of things that are mm-hmm. like grilled cheese that that's vegan. But is it plant based? No. No. Whole right. Food plant based. Yeah, that, that's yeah, the goal. That's right. Yeah, you're right. And as soon as you make it hot or cold, mm-hmm. it loses value. Nutritional that's, value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was told that. You're too. great about it. I see you doing your smoothie. Yeah. Morning. And it makes a difference, honestly. When you, when you treat yourself well, not just from the outside, but from the inside out, it shows. I mean, I can tell you, you have such great energy. Like, you just, I mean, it's just, I, I can't even put it into words. <laughs> and you, and you just feel it. Thanks. And it's natural. And that's because you take care of yourself from the inside out. And if, I just know that your story is going to help so many people, like, I feel like if when we see one person doing it day in, day out, someone's gonna have enough courage to do the same thing. So keep posting, keep talking about it. Like you don't even know, maybe someone's doing it right now because of you. Thank you. So yeah, like do it like shamelessly, like just who cares what everyone says? Like just keep doing it because you are changing lives. I appreciate it because yeah. there's definitely shame. I definitely get shame. I People understand. Call me all the time. They oh say, you my look gosh. Too skinny. Right. They eat me this and that. I'm just like okay, I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for caring. Right. I'm continuing to do this. Yeah. And I'd say there's probably 15 people that have picked this up over the past eight months because I've felt oh. pretty vehemently about it. Yeah. No. See, there you go. Share. 
This one guy, DJ Baby Drew. Yeah. Picked it up and we did oh, a raw, did? a raw wow. vegan 30 day challenge last month. And now we're on a 30 day sustainability challenge this month. Wow. How cool is that? Me, him, Cassie Heriter, and Davey Heriter. Really? All of them? She's the director of marketing for Live at the Battery, Sports and Social. Oh, wow. Games. And Davey's the MC, so they all have tons of influence over that's, a lot that's of people. I was about to say. They just heard my story randomly at one of Davey's shows like two months ago. And we're like, fuck, we need to do this. Like, wow. Now, like next week, like, let's, let's just do it. And DJ Baby Drew, Andrew, has changed his life. He's lost 30 pounds. Yeah. Maybe more now. Oh my god! And he's been, and he's been getting tons of flack, and he just keeps shamelessly putting. Yeah, it. just keeps doing. And just doing him, it. he's got a quarter million followers just on Instagram. Right. His, his influence across the board of saying, "Hey, eat plants, go vegan, cut processed food and meat," is going to save humanity in so many wow. ways. I think this is truly about to come. That it, I just yeah. found out Arnold Schwarzenegger has been vegan for <gasps> twenty years. What? Twenty years? You see. <gasps> get pounded with me, me you know, exactly, all the commercials. Right. They have a video, a movie coming out later this wow. year. Wow. Called The Great Challenge, I think. Oh. And it is, I just saw the That's trailer today. Amazing. Atlanta Time Lapse shared it with me and chills. Literally legitimate deep chills, Stephanie, about his, what is about to happen. Wow. <sighs> I want people to feel this. And yeah. get on this level and this vibrational energy. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah, that, I, that, like, I, like you said, it's like a new, something is happening. Something's going to happen where people are going to realize that what they're consuming is not that great and they can just change how they feel about themselves by just changing the way they eat. Mm -hmm. So that's Absolutely. very inspirational and wow. It all starts at home. It really does. Yeah. In a grocery store, and you know, it starts at you gotta go. That's one of the things I don't have to, I get to go. To that is so true. I have the honor and privilege every other day, yeah, to go to the grocery store and buy produce. And it's so nice because I just walk in, exactly right. Go right. Every grocery store <laughs> has in the, the same planet, right. You walk in and go right, it's you right there, produce, and then everything else later. Every once in a while, there's a few things that you need to you right. just go through and get. Exactly. But that's it. That is a great point. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Wow. So how do you advise your clients to eat? Honestly, I say balance. Um, I tell, the, I, what I try to do first is to get rid of the shame of eating, period. Eat facts. Like, if you want to go vegan, go vegan. No shame. If you want to do this diet or whatever just Keto do yeah just do without shame i think there's so much shame with eating i think the problem with the fitness industry is the shame the, the guilt tripping like oh wow you had pizza wow you're just a failure like no so i, I get rid of that first I'm, so i tell them how do, i ask them how do you feel like how are you feeling today like how do you how do you feel with your journey and what are you eating like, do you feel sluggish? Do you feel tired? Do you feel energized? Like, I, I help my clients get in tune with their emotions first. Mm. I'm like, get rid of, let's get rid of all the fancy stuff. Like, just focus on how it's making you feel. So if you're doing this diet and you're feeling slow or tired, you should probably not do that diet anymore. Don't do it just because you see a celebrity on Instagram or whatever doing it. doesn't mean it's right for you. But make sure you're in tune with how you feel because how you feel is going to direct your diet. So if you want to go vegan because you feel energized and healthy, then stick to it. Who cares what anyone says? You stick to it because you feel great. If you want to do keto, do keto. I mean, it's just, but make sure it's aligned with who you are and what your goals are. And so instead of just giving them, all right, eat this, eat that, say, like, how do you feel? And when you eat those foods, how do you feel afterwards? Feel bad, all right, let's change it. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I keep it simple. I like that. Yeah, just being honest and raw with yourself first. Because I can tell you to eat whatever, you, whatever, and it may not work for you. And every single person's yeah. nutritional journey is that of their yeah. own. Yeah, is that, so exactly. Their body is used to certain types of food. Exactly. That's one of the biggest things I was learning today from some research is you've been eating cheese or 
dairy or certain things for so long and that's what your body has gotten used to storing and mm-hmm. and providing fuel and and cell growth yeah that's so true and so when you switch it too rapidly then you're gonna feel tired or sluggish oh or right that. right and so it's smart to slowly transition yeah in those ways i went cold turkey just 100 percent. yeah and so i oh felt God. it i felt it more on the toilet the yeah the second week mm-hmm. the first week was not so bad the second third was all the toxins oh uh, yeah just, you could see it going out, out like little right. pieces of black and yeah it's literally crazy, it's crazy. with green and, and all yeah. the other colors the good colors yeah it out yeah i wish talking about poop wasn't so taboo i know i'm like you have to talk about it I, there's to. there's so many bad things that stay in our body like sugar doesn't really go anywhere Mm-hmm. And I keep telling my clients, get rid of the, 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 the soda I'm, I'm really a stickler on because it's just, there's no, there are no benefits. I mean, oh. none. Zero. It, it, because the sugar just swims in your body, swims in your body, like it doesn't really go anywhere. So I, yeah, getting rid of that, that addiction of, of sugar, I feel like on a deeper level, um, can deal with sugar, but... <laughs> Honestly, sugar, yeah, it gives you that high, but it's almost like, what are you actually chasing? Like, why do you need that high to be productive? Why can't you just get your mind straight first? Thanks. So what are we actually trying to cover up? Emotions and food, honestly, need to go together. They do. I'm with it. Yeah. So you what are, provide, what are we, like, spiritual... I, right? I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> This is, this yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That, How many clients do you have? I have about 20 now. 20 plus souls. Yeah. Oh, so Whoa. sweet. 21. <laughs> 21. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am my own client. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, so what are we chasing? Why do we feel the need? Yeah. And, and what's that? What's, oh, emotional eating. Tip of my tongue. Emotional eating. I'm a big stickler about as well. And I know... It's it's like it's almost like it's encouraged sadly, like, oh, you had a bad day, just eat the entire carton of ice cream. Bad feelings gone. No. I'm gonna eat it. I'm like, oh man, why didn't eat the entire thing? Now you're gonna start guilt tripping yourself and feel even worse, and then you're gonna have that defeated attitude. Well, I already messed it up, so I'm gonna have, you know, whatever. Like, no. No, 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 no. Like, what are you trying to cover up? You had a bad day. So instead of just covering up with food, why don't you go do something productive? Something that makes you feel good about yourself. Like, okay, uh, go running or go talk to a friend. Anything that doesn't, that won't hold you back. Um, but again, it's just knowing yourself. Break the pattern. Yeah, break that pattern and what, and really under, and ask yourself, what void are you actually trying to fill by overeating, mm-hmm. by sitting on the couch? And identify just, that void. Yeah, identify that void. Like, did you have and a bad day? It. Yeah, and then love it. Yes. Yes, and love it. And, you know, I read an article that said self-love means embracing the bad stuff about you too, not just the good stuff, which it's fluffed a lot on Instagram. That's all It's that not is. just going to the spa. Well, highlight no. reel. No, that's not self-love. That's, that's why exactly. you and I, yeah. I think, take a lot of intention in posting. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And and sadness and downfalls yeah. and levels you have and acknowledging to. that. You have to, because it's reality. I mean, it's like, um, I I also feel like, too, like, Instagram is not a bad thing. At all. It's not at it all. It is what you make it. It is what you make it. Um, some people are truly happy. So why are we, it's like, I think people are scared to be truly happy. Absolutely. And I think that's why Can't Instagram. Can't be this happy, something's going to exactly, go wrong. Exactly. Like, What's like, you know, I, I, people can't just be happy. It's like we're almost scared to be happy. And why is that? I mean, you never know what are that person posting on Instagram is actually genuinely happy. And that's how they express their happiness. It, it's just, you just never really know people's story, but it's like there's just fear of feeling good. Right. Fear of being happy, fear of being in love, fear of just being free. Because... In order to get to that, you have to be a little uncomfortable first in order to get to that kind of freedom or that mm-hmm. kind of love or that kind of, you know, that kind of clarity. I feel that. And people don't want to be uncomfortable. So it feels safer just going through the motions and just, you know, doing what feels safe, but you're not 
happy. So why don't you just dig deep? And, I, and of course it takes a long time, it's not just easy, but it's just really sitting there and just digging deep and just saying, okay, why do I feel unhappy? How can I get to this point of happiness? I am just as deserving as the next person and really knowing that and believing that you are deserving. So why not get to that point? Mm. What's stopping you from being happy? What's stopping you from taking your, your chance of creating your own life? So you charge for counseling, Tim? No, <laughs> actually, I, no, it's so funny. People actually don't see this side of me a lot and I'm trying to post like this more on social media. That's why, honestly, to be real with you, I don't post a lot of workout videos on purpose because I'm doing the same workout as any other person, which is not a bad thing, I mean, it works, it works, but I show more of who I am on Instagram, more than just, you know, oh, this is my chest workout today. No one really cares, and it's not, help I feel like I'm not helping. If I'm not there to really counsel you, I'm not really helping, but let me show who Stephanie really is so that I can relate to you. And then if you wanna talk about fitness, we can do that. But I want you to know the human side, mm -hmm. not the fitness side. The fitness side is, yeah, but the human side is what I what I really value about myself the most. So why not share that? Without that connection, yeah. love and identity to that, exactly. there's, no, there's no real That's more important. community or culture yeah. surrounded it. Yeah, so I post my clients more than I'm working out than myself because I want people to see that that's what my brand's about, it's about my clients. But when it comes to me, I'm gonna show them going out and having fun, because that's me. I like going out, having fun, and socializing, taking pictures, and you know, I think people wanna see that more than what I'm, do what I'm doing in the gym every day. I feel like people connect with who I am more, because I'm showing the human side Absolutely. of myself. So what's next for 12 Fit? Oh my God, what's next? So I just ran out of gym space in West Midtown, okay. and now I'm not driving all over the place like a crazy person, and now my clients can come to me. <laughs> and it's gonna change my life, honestly, in multitude of ways, and it's gonna change my mental Where's health the gym? too. It's um right up D4 Road, where that um the forest? yeah, it's right there, like around the corner. It's about three blocks that way. Yeah. And I remember you telling me, no, move to West Midtown, and look at that. Before I even thought about, become, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, that's the chakra is just aligning. Yeah, honestly. Sweet, sweet divinity. I really, yes, but honestly. True. So it was meant to be, everything that's happening is just meant to be. Like, this was meant to happen. Absolutely. Everything, I feel like it has a purpose. Oh, those pictures we just got. OMG. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> I'm excited. Y'all don't even, oh, God. <laughs> I'm excited. Go on the front page. <laughs> You're awesome. awesome. No, it's been no, it's it's awesome. Fano fit. Yes, Fano fit. fit. Yeah, Fano fit. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited to grow, and it's also gonna help me become more like open and not so drained. Just going back to my emotions, how I've been mm -hmm. feeling every day, and just. Being able to take care of myself, be in one spot, I can answer people's text messages and emails without waiting for it. You know, like I can, I can just do all the little things that actually matter to me, like responding to people in a good time. I, I think it's important because people reach out to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just feel like being able to be centered, not only physically but emotionally. I'm not so drained, and it's like so. It was so hard for me to like connect with people sometimes. By the end of the day. Cause I've been coming and I'm in this and I'm oh my god like why? <laughs> that voice all day. Yeah, and then by the end of the day, I get messages from people and I just sometimes I just get so upset. I'm like I can't respond. I'm like oh my god, please leave me alone, please. But I don't like feeling that way. I'm like so why do I feel tired and drained? Oh, cause I'm running around like a crazy person. I'm not taking care of myself properly. So let me center myself physically, so I can center myself emotionally and be healthier. And already I feel so much better because I made the decision. I'm like, let me just center myself, center my life. And it's just going to change so much just because of that one small thing. But it's important. Like, I was just so tired. I didn't want to really, like, talk to anybody at the end of the day. I was just kind of like, oh, my God, like, please. <laughs> I want to sleep. But now I'm like, I'm in one place. And I can still do the same thing, but in one place. <laughs> so it's great. Like, it's life changing, honestly. I love it. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, it is. So, where do you like to go out? 
Ooh, where do I go? Honestly, I feel like I'm in bucket all the time. <laughs> all my friends are there, all my clients are there. Um, you know, where do I go exactly? I love Bar Taco, honestly, but they're like twice a week. <laughs> it's a great place. It's a great I love Kill Me Crazy, mm. always there. Mm. Um, I go to Regent sometimes or St. Regis or really what I do mainly though is like dinner and conversation. I don't really like club as much. If you see me there, it's because someone dragged me there. <laughs> like you saw me last week. I'm like, I actually don't want to be here. <laughs> I don't mean to be here. I'm like, I'm here. Have but, to be. Exactly. But I love conversation and intimacy more. Like I'd rather do that than How do you feel you about that at clubs, conversation? It can be hmm. one, it's hard to hear. Two, it's hard to connect. And three, it's just it's not we can't dig beneath the surface, obviously, because it's like there's so much going on. There's so much alcohol and the craziness and people and it's just it's so hard for me to like think. So it's like all the distractions. Uh, yeah, so many distractions. Those phones and phones, and then you get home. You're so tired. You didn't even do anything. You're you're just standing there. <laughs> but why are you so tired? Because all that noise. Yeah, it's like I didn't really do anything. Notice people in the future. Where do they hold their phone when they receive? And yourself too. Oh yeah. Because when you're down. When you're down. You're down. Yeah. I always try to be conscious of when I make a video that I'm holding it. At oh, hold yeah. It yeah. So I'm looking up to my people, to whom I'm oh, speaking. Oh, wow. That is very profound. Wow. wow. <laughs> I, I had to have a moment of silence. I'm like, wait, that's so true. Hmm. You know, that reminds me too. I actually stopped. Like, when I'm going to a coffee shop or a grocery store, I actually stop taking my phone out and be open. Because I feel like if I'm always looking busy, I might be missing a connection. Absolutely. Because you're not going to approach someone who's like frantically on their phone and they're scrolling and they're talking and no, 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 no. You're not going to approach them. Than a connection. Yeah. So I feel like I, I, if I look more open and, and, and feel more open, I can connect with different people. You just never know who you're gonna run into. But if you're so busy on your phone and so busy trying to find something in your purse and you, you might, someone might be looking and they may wanna to talk to you about something. Like they may even wanna compliment you but they feel like they can't because you're so occupied with, with, the, with something else. Instead of just being present. Okay, I'm going to the store. I need to get some apples. Let me just do that. You just never know. So I stopped I stop doing that and it's, you know as much as we need these devices yeah. to do this and that right. get on it try to not look down yeah. and get the fuck off of it yeah get yeah on to get off yeah and get here yeah because there's no more value there's no in the world yeah the present time because you I, yeah i thought about that. i was like i could really miss a connection by just being on my phone trying to figure out whatever else is why <laughs> checking these red balls right like what no let me focus on what my task is here. And I started doing that because sometimes I'll go to the store or, I'm, oh, I need to go to the store. And I'm like, wait, I go home. I'm like, oh man, I forgot to buy toothpaste. But I would have remembered it if I wasn't on my phone half the time. So now I'm like, okay, my list is this. I'm going to get it and I'm actually follow my list. There we go. Because I'm not distracted. I love it. Yeah. So what do you eat? Ooh, what do I eat? Um, I eat a lot of salmon, honestly. Um, <sighs> Poke bowls. All the time. Everyone's been so I know. You can make them yourself. For that, like yeah. I need to start doing that because I spent a lot of money. I'll take you to yeah. Nande Su. Oh, it's a Korean yeah. farmer's market. Like nine oh, nine. yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I need to make my own. The ones around Cobb. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the I never went to the Cobb and one. The are cheaper oh. than any. Yeah, they any. are. I need to do that because I love bowls. Like anything was just, it's because it's simple and it's quick. But yeah, if I start making my own poke bowls, I'd probably save like a lot of money. Spend 20 bucks, you make like seven or eight. See, there you go. Smart. But yeah, I just, you know, I eat bowls. The grains, the vegetables. Um, yeah, let's keep it simple. I don't really, I don't, when I, when I go out like to a dinner or something, I, 
I'm just smart with it. I don't overeat, honestly. That's right. I really don't overeat. I don't eat till I'm full. No. I eat till I'm satisfied. Mm. I just... Ditto. I can't know. eat big meals. I Yeah, I can't either. I, I can't. I did a bike ride from San Fran to D.C. in college. <gasps> oh, my God. Really? And we had to eat... We got to eat 8, 10, 12 times a day. And so it was just like wow. little bitty, bitty yeah. snacks. And I hadn't been able in my life up to that point to consume a banana or a lot of different fruits yeah. because of the texture. I had mm. gag reflex and just some, oh, some wow. mental problem. Once you have to have it, you either eat this That's banana so and true. you go or you See? don't the, do so yeah. hot on the road. Right. And so that kind of made me adapt to be able to consume anything. I have no allergies. There you go. And, right. You know, I'm really blessed uh, to be able That's to consume amazing. and want to be able to consume and want to stuff like that. Yeah, and that it just changes your life. I feel like when you start just eating better, absolutely just small changes and just eating what makes you feel great. Mm. And because when you feel good, it shows, and you have better relationships. I mean, your career. I mean, everything. It affects everything. It truly does. It really it does. So, out. Exactly. So when we start our first, that's why there's so much emphasis on starting with you. You are the the, the main impact because if you have yourself centered and ready to go, it's so natural when you're talking to people. It's like you don't have to force anything. People will be inspired by just who you are already. I mean, just be inspired. That's it. Well, you have that effect on many oh, people. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I've, um, I've changed and I've grown a lot the past few years. You know, I've had some painful experiences, but I'm so, I'm thankful for it all. Like what? Ooh, well, um, you know, it, when I left my full-time job and I told my friends and family, oh, I'm going to start my fitness brand. Of course, not everyone was on, you know, on the ride. I mean, I wasn't expecting them to, but it, it kind of made me realize how important it is for me to be on my own and be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be, have that season of being alone and working on yourself and growing. Facts. And it's painful, though, because you, you would think that your besties would cheer you on, but sometimes they don't, but it's like, just being strong enough to know that the right people will come to you. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. Um, and that's one of the biggest things I've learned this year, actually. Um, believe it or not, I, I, I actually went to this school, and I was talking to the students, and one girl asked me, she was like, so did your life change, like, really? When you became a stranger, like, did your friends change? And I said, actually, yeah. And she was so shocked. She was like, really, they're not happy for you? I was like... The sad thing is, when something good happens to you, and someone is unhappy with their life, it's going to be very hard for them to be happy for you. And you want to be with people who are happy for you. So it, it was a hard pill to swallow. I mean, I a lots of surprises this year, so that's painful. Right. I mean, you would think, but you know, people who would who were cheering you on before, and then you land your big goal, and it's like. But wait, you were just cheering me on leading up to this competition. And I actually got it. You're surprised? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's, that's a painful lesson to learn. But I can empathize with that, for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it just blows my mind. But at the same time, I'm, I, God sh has shown me so many people who are meant to be there. People I, I met this year. You know what I mean? It's meant to be. I'm going to give you something. Me? Oh my god, a present? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah! What is it? No tuning in? Okay. <laughs> Alright, I want you to take this. Okay. What are you gonna do with it? Oh. Hold on, I need to take it back real quick. Okay. <laughs> but here's two more. And three more. But here, I need it all back. Oh. But you perfectly that. have stayed in the posture of giving and receiving. Yes. So uh, you don't know if I need or if need, I'm giving. Right. In any kind of circumstance or situation. So 
when I got the gift, I took it and I said, I'm going to store this, I'm going to yeah. save it, I'm going to invest it, I'm going to put it for the future and help the people. And my friend said, no, 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 David, stay here because you didn't know if one was coming and, yeah. and what could be the next opportunity. That is so true. Yeah, that's true. I have one other person, I probably should 50, that have stayed in the posture like you just did. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. Hmm. High five? Yeah. Oh my, wow. <laughs> Heck yeah, so uh, I was uh, getting close. Okay. Let's uh, let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Yeah, so you can find me, Stephanie Twam, on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. <laughs> it's the same, my first and last name. <laughs> Twam okay. Fit, LLC, but for me, mainly Stephanie Twam, you'll find all my stuff, so. That's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-T-W-U-N. Yes. yes, perfect, there you go. Gotcha. Yay, well, it was a pleasure. This was fun. My pleasure and honor, absolutely. Yeah. Much love, Elena. You're the best. <laughs> All right, y'all, signing up. Thank you for tuning in. That was great. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Mr. Elena podcast. Had an incredible experience with Miss Stephanie. And we look forward to connecting with you soon. Make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and one of the best things you can do is take a screenshot of however you're listening to this and post it to your Instagram story. Thanks so much.